Service begins in the Book of Common Prayer on page 355. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray, and to give more than we either desire or deserve. Pour upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which our conscience is afraid, and giving us those good things for which we are not worthy to ask, except through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Call your attention as we do each Sunday to the announcements on the back of the bulletin. October uh, 13th uh, and October 24th, uh, Room in the Inn. Uh, if you can help with either one of those occasions, uh, please do so. The uh, social justice team will meet uh, following the service this morning. And then at 3 o'clock this afternoon, uh, we will have the blessing of the animals. One of the, the things that I enjoyed doing when I was teaching Korean to my granddaughter was that uh, all of the animals in Korea make different sounds. Uh, the, <laughs> the they don't, a dog doesn't say bow wow, it says mong mong and all that kind of stuff. So uh, I won't bore you this morning with all of that, but uh, uh, it should be fun this afternoon when we, when we bless the animals. So I encourage you to uh, come and, and bring your favorite pet as well or, or bring treats for, or just bring yourself for the fun of it. That, uh, at 3 o'clock uh, here outside the, the church. Of course, this uh, tradition of blessing animals is associated with the St. Francis Day, which occurs on the 4th of October. The uh, uh, Francis uh, had a habit of, of calling all of God's creatures brothers and sisters, which is a, kind of a charming way to think about it. Uh, but uh, I want to point out to you that uh, the Episcopal Church has monastics, has monks and nuns, uh, like the Roman Catholic Church and other traditions, the Eastern Orthodox Church as well, and people like that. But the Franciscan variety of monasticism in the Episcopal Church was founded in the Diocese of Kentucky in the late 1800s at a place called Union Town, which is a small town on the shores of the Ohio River. Uh, and uh, uh, that group now is, is more than 100 years old, uh, and uh, the, uh, they, they asked me as the historiographer a couple years ago to uh, take a, a picture of the church where they were founded, and I said, well, it doesn't exist in, anymore, so that would be kind of hard to do, but maybe I have something in the archives. And, uh, but then I decided that the cross that had been on a steeple of that church had, had not left our hands. It had kind of migrated over to uh, Morgan Field, Morgan Town, I guess. Uh, or, yeah, uh, near Henderson, where we had a church for a while, and, and and then when that church closed, the cross wandered to Henderson, uh, where it's now ensconced in the garden. Uh, and so I went to Henderson, took a picture of the cross that, that uh, was there when that uh, monastic group was was founded. And, uh, they shared that uh, in their publicity when they celebrated their 100th anniversary that was presided at by the presiding bishop of the Episcopal Church and so forth like that. So, uh, so we have a, a, a connection with St. Francis uh, in, in that regard. I just shared that with you this morning. The, uh, next Sunday, uh, your uh, priest will not be myself because I will be in Virginia. Uh, and uh, the, uh, our supply priest next Sunday is Joe Tree, whom some of you know because he's been here once before. Uh, Joe is, is, is uh, originally from Henderson. He grew up in Henderson, Kentucky. And then he was in Paducah when he was uh, beginning his call to the ministry and was a postulant from Grace Church, Paducah, uh, and uh, uh, went off to seminary and became an Episcopal priest and 
that kind of thing. But like so many of us, uh, like myself as well, we spend a lot of time outside the diocese doing other things. He recently has retired and is back here now and is part of our diocese and family again. So, And I will be at my seminary th this week. Uh, I've been in the White House once before, but my wife never was. So. I asked if she could come, so so we're going to the White House uh, <laughs> before we go to the seminary uh, uh, events as well. So it'll be an interesting thing to tell you all about it when I get back. Okay. Are there any other announcements that we need to call our attention to? Then our service continues now with the readings and the word. I get up here I, I grew up Presbyterian and my dad was a minister so I know a lot of you say well we really love it when you read well it's almost him to a T so when you hear me that's kind of what he sounded like except a little bit more southern our first reading is from Isaiah chapter 5 verses 1 through 7 let me sing for my beloved my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of stones and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the middle of it and hewed out a, vine vat in, a wine vat in it. He expected it to yield grapes, but it yielded wild grapes. And now inhabitants of Jerusalem, people of Judah, just between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done in it? When I expected it to yield grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? And now I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will remove its hedge and it shall be devoured. I will break down its wall and it shall be trampled down. I will make it a waste and it shall be not pruned or hoed and it shall be overgrown with briars and thorns. I will also command to the clouds that they rain no rain upon it, for the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his pleasant planting. He expected justice, but saw bloodshed, righteousness, but heard a cry. The word of the Lord. Our next reading is Psalm 80, verses 7 through 14. If you could, please re read responsibly at the even verse. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. You prepared the ground for it. It took root and filled the land. You stretched out its tendrils to the sea and its branches to the river. The wild boar of the forest has ravaged it and the beasts of the field have gazed upon it. Our second reading is from Philippians chapter 3, verses 4b through 14. If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews as to the law, a Pharisee as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet what other gains I had, these I have come to regard as lost because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as lost because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. 
For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ to be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death. If somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead, not that I already have attained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but it is one thing I do. Forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. It's the word of the Lord. Thank you, God. Now let us stand for our hymn before the God of the world. around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his servants to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his servants, beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again, he sent other servants, more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, they will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. 
Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, He will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce of the harvest time. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scripture the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to people that produce the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they realized that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds because they regarded him as a prophet. This is the good news, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Lord Christ. The Lord grant his blessing. The Lord be my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily and fittingly proclaim his holy gospel in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Today is the 19th Sunday after Pentecost, the Lord's Day proper 22, in the year of our Lord, 2023. This is Columbus Day weekend, and today is also the Sunday in World Space Week, October 4th through 10th, promoted by the United Nations. The dates are based on the recognition of two important dates in space history. The launch of the first human-made Earth satellite, Sputnik 1, on October 4th, 1957 and the signing of the Outer Space Treaty on October 10th, 1967. The treaty forbids countries from deploying nuclear weapons or any other kinds of weapons of mass destruction in outer space. Today is also the Sunday in the octave of October 4th, the feast day of St. Francis, the 13th century friar who is especially remembered for his love of all God's creatures, who was the author of the Canticum Fratris Solus, Song to Brother's Son, or the Canticle of the Son, also called Laudus Creatorum, Praise to Creation. We have two versions of this canticle in our hymnal, Hymn 400. All creatures of our God and King begins. All creatures of our God and King, lift up your voices. Let us sing, Alleluia, Alleluia. Bright burning sun with golden beams, pure, pale silver moon that gently gleams. Oh, praise him, oh, praise him. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. And hymn 406, Most High Omnipotent Good Lord, begins and includes, Most High Omnipotent Good Lord, to thee be ceaseless praise outpoured, and blessings without measure. My Lord be praised by brother Son, who through the skies his course doth run and shines in brilliant splendor. My Lord be praised by sister Moon and all the stars, that with her soon will point the glittering heavens. Perhaps the inspiration for St. Francis' Canticle of the Sun was this canticle, a song of creation, Benedici Omne Opera Domine, which is found in our prayer book on page 47 or page 88, which in metrical form begins, Bless you, the Lord, works of the Lord, heavenly hosts, angels of God, Powers of the Lord, bless you the Lord. Praise and exalt him forever. Oceans above, beyond the sky, you sun and moon, bless you the Lord. Stars of heaven, bless you the Lord. Praise and exalt him forever. First recognize also in the 20th century, we have a prayer attributed to St. Francis. It's found on the prayer book on page 833, Lord, make us instruments of your peace. 
And in metrical form is a hymn, 593, Lord, make us servants of your peace. Today, as our world suffers so much, we all suffer in and with it. We look to God to comfort us in our afflictions and to heal all our distress. We acknowledge all our weakness and inabilities. Ultimately, we rely on God to restore all his creation. Only then will we dwell together in harmony and peace. How important it is now that we and all the nations of the world keep the treaty not to deploy nuclear or any other weapons of mass destruction in space. And let us work and pray that these weapons are also never used on Earth. Let us hope and pray that we also never deploy in space even defensive weapons or military devices of any other kind. Let us remember the words of Neil Armstrong when the eagle landed on the moon in the Sea of Tranquility. We came in peace for all mankind. May our presence in space continue to be a cooperative and a peaceful endeavor with other nations. Well, we are celebrating Columbus Day and World Space Week. Let us fix our sights on the things above. Columbus was guided by the stars. We see how vast and immense the universe is. All this is witness to the greatness and the power of our Creator. How humbling it is that God, by his abundant love, has made and blessed us with the knowledge of his works. He made us to represent him and has given the whole world into our care for us to rule and serve all his creatures. What an awesome responsibility God has placed upon us. May God be glorified in the heavens and may peace prevail on earth. The Jews frequently begin their prayers saying, which translated means, Blessed art thou, O Lord, King of the universe. John the Divine, the author of the book of Revelation, wrote canticles, songs of praise to God, the creator of all things, and to Christ the Lamb. And our Book of Common Prayer adopted these as canticles in morning prayer. And I share them with you now in metrical form. The Song of the Lamb. All glory, honor, kingly power, O Lord our God, are yours by right. For all that it is you made to be and by your will have brought to light. And yours by right, Lamb who was slain, who for God ransomed with your blood from every tribe, tongue, folk, nation, a priestly kingdom to serve God. And so to you, God, on your throne and Christ the Lamb whom we adore, be worship, praise, glory, and power forever and forevermore. A song of the redeemed. O ruler of the world, Lord God, how marvelous are showing your deeds so great and wonders done, surpassing human knowing. Your ways are ways of righteousness, and all your ways are ways of truth, O King, all life bestowing. Lord, who cannot give homage to? Before you bowing lowly and singing praises of your name, you are the one most holy. Because your works have been revealed, all nations will draw near to you, O King, in endless glory.
Glory to God, as first it was, triune God, the Blessed One, now and forevermore the Lord, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, too. Eternal praise be unto you. Glory be forever done. Now the scriptures appointed for today, however, bring us down to earth because they warn us not to lose God's favor. The gospel in the Old Testament readings appointed to complement it both describe a vineyard to which the people of God are related. In the lesson from Isaiah, the vineyard does not produce good grapes. Isaiah concluded, for the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel and the people of Judah, his pleasant planning. But he expected justice, but saw bloodshed, righteousness, but heard a cry. In the gospel lesson from Matthew, self-serving tenants in the vineyard deprived the landowner of the vineyard by rejecting those who were sent to collect the grapes, even killing the son to keep the produce of the vineyard for themselves. But Matthew quotes Jesus as telling those unworthy tenants of the vineyard that the kingdom of God will be taken away from them and given to different people that will produce the fruit of the kingdom. The point of today's lesson from scriptures is that we, we, you and me, God's people, are called to labor in God's vineyard and to give God the produce which rightly belongs to him. Today may be and often is designated Stewardship Sunday. We begin today to think about our annual Every Member appeal to our members to make our pledges for supporting this church in the coming year. We ask, what does God require of me? I believe that as a member of the church, my bounden duty is to follow Christ, to worship God every Sunday in his church, and to work and pray and to give for the spread of his kingdom. Those are words from the 1928 Book of Common Prayer. The catechism in our current edition of the Book of Common Prayer has this question and answer. Question, what is the duty to all Christians? Answer, the duty of all Christians is to follow Christ, to come together week by week for corporate worship, and to work, pray, and give for the spread of the kingdom of Christ. The Book of Common Prayer, 856. Clearly it has been and is the teaching of the church that we have a duty to be good stewards in the use of the gifts God has given us for the furtherance of his kingdom. In this time of stewardship, in the next following days, each of us will be asked to commit or pledge a portion of our treasure to the support of this church. It's not just about money. The universe, which belongs to God, is about time and space. And so we are asked to think about how we would commit those things as well. When we do this, we are putting it in God's hands, and the work is not our work alone, but God working with us. God has blessed us with the gifts he has given us, and it will be a blessing for the gifts that we give back to him to be used to his service and in the ministry in this place and in God's name. We are not to give in order to get back for ourselves. We are not to give 
to be promoted in the eyes of others. We are not to give to seek the world's favor. What we do, we are to do for the Lord, and not for ourselves. Let us be cheerful givers, remembering the words of our Lord Jesus that it is better to give than to receive. And let us go on our way rejoicing, glad to contribute what we have, knowing that we are doing what we can and that the Lord is putting us and what we give into his hands to the best use possible. Having said all this, I conclude by reciting hymn 705 from our hymnal. As those of old their first fruits brought of vineyard, flock, and field to God, the giver of all good, the source of bounteous yield. So we today our first fruits bring, the wealth of this good land, of farm and market, shop and home, of mind and heart and hand. A world in need now summons us to labor, love, and give to make our life an offering to God that all may live. The Church of Christ is calling us to make the dream come true, a world redeemed by Christ-like love, all life in Christ made new. With gratitude and humble trust we bring our best to thee, O God to serve thy cause and share thy love with all humanity. O thou who gavest us thyself in Jesus Christ thy Son, help us to give ourselves each day until life's work is done. The Lord grant his blessing. The Lord be in my heart and on my lips that these words may be his holy gospel. Amen. Our service continues with the Nicene Creed found on page 358 in the book of Congress. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became a incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he has worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers this morning are found on page 383 in the Book of Common Prayer. Service continues now with the prayers. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God and the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the world, 
for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for our bishop and all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for our president, for the leaders of nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for this city and for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for seasonable weather and for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the good earth which God has given us and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for those who travel on land, on water, or in the air, or through outer space, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the absolution and remission of our sins and offenses, let us pray to the Lord. Lord that we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Defend us, deliver us, and in thy compassion protect us, O Lord, by thy grace. Lord in the communion of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another in all our life to Christ our God. In the beginning, God, your spirit moved over the deep, and night was turned to day, as by thy word all things were made. Grant us to brave the waves of life's uncertain sea, to sail into the night to reach the light, to discover your true design and purpose for the world, and at last to arrive on the shores of the new world of unlimited possibility. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O God of abundance, who has poured out to us such a large measure of creation's treasures, that our table is richly furnished and our cup overflows, let our hearts be set on you and not on material wealth. Keep us from being captivated by our own possessions, but rather grant us to use the gifts you have given us to the service of others, especially those in need, and to your glory, through Jesus Christ our Savior and our Lord. Amen. Blessed Lord God, you have taught us that you do not willingly afflict or grieve the human family. Look with compassion on all who have suffered so much and experienced such overwhelming loss due to war, earthquakes, winds, floods, and fires. 
Restore to them the assurance of your unfailing mercy. Remove from them the distress of all that has afflicted them. Strengthen them in the work of their recovery. And may all those who respond to assist them share with them your healing gifts and love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the church, the nation, and all the world peace and conquest. To us and all your servants, eternal life in your heavenly kingdom, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Using the form found on page 360 of the prayer book, let us devoutly kneeling or sitting as we are able, confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Christ strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. Let us stand up. The peace of the Lord be all with you. by the mercy of God to present yourselves unto the Lord with the ring of worship, walking in love as Christ loved us, and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice unto God. Let us with joy and gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor unto the Lord.
by the work of the ministry, by the welfare of the saints, by the establishment of your truth and virtue, by the same divine and grace of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
and offering to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving. We celebrate his death and resurrection as we await his coming. Lord God, our fathers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God and Father of our Lord, Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world of ours. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only, and not for strength, for pardon only, and not for renewal. But the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit of Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Your risen Lord, be known to us in the great of the world. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor and glory and worship from generation to generation. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has come, we are both
Son of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Blessed is God Almighty, Father, Son. 